Since you and I know very well, that bullshit sells in Malaysia. <laughs> and bullshit is very likely to also win in the next election. <laughs> Unless we do something about it. So it is not going to be easy. It is going to be hard. And we will not delude ourselves. We will not deceive ourselves. We will never deceive others. How hard this is going to be. And you must imagine the level of bullshit that they are perpetuating. Which you don't think is beyond the pale. But yet, they are going at it systematically. They are going at it persistently. And they are going at it without any hesitation. Uh, nothing is... Uh, beyond them. Uh, for example, I just like to cite some of the lies that they have flung at us. The latest one, of course, that you see on TV3 every day the news is that I have uh, sold out the Muslims and sold out Islam by selling more sand. I think I probably uh, saw that in the news daily. And that, of course, is something very inflammatory and provocative. And their reason is that because when we sold off the land, by open competitive tender menu to the highest bidder, we also sell off the most land. Now their logic is that uh, I don't know what logic that is. Uh, whatever it is. Now if you have a plan, if you have a plan, under existing rules, you must not only make provisions for public purposes such as mosques, non-Muslim religious places of worship, parks, roads, and you know, all the other requirements provided by law. So if they say that I sold off mosque land, then I should also have sold off non-Muslim religious places of worship land. But that was never highlighted. They only highlight that mosque land, not the non-Muslim part. So it's very, very racial and very, very racist. But worst of all, is that this is a lie. This is a lie because the developer who has, been, who has won the competitive bid for that piece of land has not even submitted new plans. You can, and you know, when you submit new plans, you must make provision for public purposes, which includes most land and of course, non muslim places of religious worship. So for them to say that I sold off most land or even non muslim land, you would have to wait until they have submitted new plans and they have been approved. Without any more land, then only can you say that we have sold it off. But when you have not even submitted any plans yet to the local authorities, we still continue with this time. So this is something that we have, this is some of the bullshit that we have to deal with uh, here. And you may think that uh, it's so silly, it's so stupid that no one will believe it. But you know, when there are people who are too lazy to venture beyond the mainstream media, it sells. Unfortunately, it sells. So that's why I said just now that we need more books like this. We need more effort. Or else, if you can't cut through the bullshit, bullshit wins. I'm serious. So, thank you Tuan Chai for trying to open up our eyes to more bullshit. Uh, it's not going to be I think, easy to do so, but uh, at least it's uh, one very important effort and that's why I'm here. I'm here not only because uh, Tuan Chai is a friend, uh, he always tries to be a bit apologetic for being critical, but my friend, you know, I've never uh, shied away from being precise because, you know, I think that is... Uh, something that is uh, positive, we, we at least have another perception or another view, we do not always agree with it, mm -hmm. but okay. your type of criticism con compared to the type of lies that is flung at you, actually it is so gentle. <laughs> you know, the latest one that they have done in uh, Utusan, Malaysia, my favourite newspaper, <laughs> <laughs> that there is a conspiracy between uh, me and the PAP government of Singapore. Why? Because I hosted a private courtesy visit by Singapore and peace. And indeed I did. There was a private courtesy visit by all the women MPs from Singapore. 14 out of 18 uh, women MPs came 
led by the uh, women's wing chair chairperson Grace Wu, who is a senior cabinet minister. Now, what's wrong with uh, hosting a private courtesy visit from Singaporean MPs? I have no problem when I host MPs from Australia, from New Zealand, from England, from Thailand, from Indonesia, but suddenly when I host a private courtesy visit by Singaporean MPs, it is a conspiracy. And I only did it uh, two days ago, that was on Friday. And he knew about it on Sunday. It must be a spy in, in my office. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would not call them a spy. I think a spy is only too kind of word. Since these are all female MPs, uh, I'll call, I will call the Utusan Malaysia a pim pim tom. <laughs> you know, Pim Pim Tongs like to uh, steal, uh, like, like to uh, 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 peep at women. So they also happen to be women and kids. So they are a, 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 a grooming Pim Pim Tong. And, uh, but as I just said, that's the type of bullshit we get. Uh, that even when you have a visit from uh, countries, the G to G, government to government relationship, uh, they uh, will spread all this type of lies. Uh, I mean, if that is so big a problem, I think a bigger problem would be I'm no use. Having direct politi for political to political relationship with the Communist Party youth wing of China. That was announced by none other than the I'm no use President Harry Jamaluddin. He was back and they had direct links, political party to political party links with the Communist Party youth.